One of the things that's changed over the last 10, 15 years, maybe 20 years, is ceilings have just kept getting higher. Now, still the standard door height is about six foot eight. So a lot of times we try and do things to take a standard height door like this twin 6'8 door that's a divide light door and get some scale up. And one of the ways that I like to do that is by putting a transom above it. And all a transom really has to be is just a piece of glass in a frame. Now, I built some divide light transoms. They're a lot of work. They really look good. But what I'm going to show you today is a simple way to add some height to a standard door where you're going to get a really great look. And one of the things that I like too is I'm going to do it with just materials that you can find at any home center. And the glass is really inexpensive. Where I live, and you want to check this, you always want to check, but where I live, because this is up high, it doesn't have to be safety glass. And so really we're just buying a very simple piece of probably 3 16 or quarter inch glass and putting a frame around it. But when you add the trim and put it all together, it looks like a really nice millwork unit and it's going to be much cheaper than buying a custom eight foot tall divide light door. This door is really kind of a commodity. I can buy these all day long anywhere. And when I get through adding the transom, the combination is going to look like even more of a millwork item than just a tall door, but it's going to be much cheaper. So I said that I was going to build this transom out of just pretty simple material that you can buy anywhere. So what I've done is just bought a finger joint interior door jam. I bought some seven foot sides and I just make a butt joint on the end. You know, when you buy this uh, door jam on one end, it's got a rebated top to receive the, uh, the side pieces. But what I do is I just cut that off. So I'm going to just be making a butt joint on both ends. And I'm going to just nail the pieces on the top and the bottom of this leg that'll make the side. I've left myself about a quarter to three inches of an inch space in my overall height because I don't want to have to jam it in there. Now, what I'm going to be using to hold the glass in place is just a simple piece of base shoe. And base shoe is about right for this because it gives a nice clean line, but also uh, there's enough there to hide the glass behind because you know you don't want that piece of glass to fit perfectly tight either. And again, it's it's very economical to buy, readily available, and you're going to see when we get done, it makes a really nice looking transom. So the first thing that I did, I'm going to figure on having quarter inch glass. Now it might be 3 16 but as long as we make a line that's going to be pretty close to the middle of our transom for the glass, we'll be fine. So I took a tri-square and set it and just made a mark. Now this pencil mark is going to be the spot where I'll install the molding right there. So what you want to do once you get the frame nailed together is cut and fit this base shoe for one side and I'll tack it in place with headless pins and then we'll just cut the pieces for the second side and store them because they can't be put in until all the painting is done and the glass is in place. This piece is just a tiny bit tight going in, but I would much rather when I'm fitting trim into an inside corner be a little bit tight because I can always block plane a little bit off of the next piece that goes in to make a good joint. Well, once it's cut short, there's nothing to do but just reach for a caulking gun. Now, I'm going to switch to a 23 gauge headless pinner because the painters are going to really like it better if they have a smaller hole to fill. And unlike putting this frame together, I'll get plenty of strength out of the 23. I don't need the strength of the 18 for this. All right, this is already starting to look like a transom. What I'm going to do now is just measure these short pieces, which as it turns out, I had eight foot material, so I've got enough left off of each one of these pieces to cut an end. Now, I wish I could say that every piece I cut fit like that the first time. So 
So I've got all my pieces of stop cut and I'll just probably throw some tape or something around those and put them back in a safe place. So now we're ready to go slide this in and make sure it fits. It's going to be really important to line up and I'll just probably cut some shims or something to space up. So let's go see how it fits.